It seems we have, as a country, become obsessed with protecting ourselves from germs. Where soap and water once sufficed, we're now arming ourselves with things such as these liquid hand sanitizers, surface wipes, even germ-quashing throat lozenges. But are our ideas about germs and where they lurk, are they wrong? I mean, do we have a, a, a fake idea of just how much danger we're in? Well, microbial expert Professor John Tagg joins us now. John, good morning to you. Good morning, Paul. Good to have you along. Is it true that we are, we perhaps do have a very false um, reality? That we imagine that we stand the chance of being infected far greater than the real the real chances. That's right, Paul. Um, as a career microbiologist, I, I consider myself almost like a, a spokesperson for the germs of this world, and I must say that microbes have been largely maligned and misunderstood. They basically just really want to be friends with us, and we need them. They are actually our closest friends. We need the microbes. We're, we're stuck with them. They're stuck on us, and that's good. Are they all our close friends, or are some of them very friendly, some of them are a little bit friendly, and others are horrible? Well, there, actually, there are a few misguided miscreants who could cause mischief, given the chance, but largely... The sort of circumstances under which they'll cause mischief is when the competition has gone away. Uh -huh. If we remove too many of the, of the good ones from our body, there's a chance that the bad guys might step in and say, OK, we've got some territory now, let's expand ourselves and, uh, and party a bit. And is that's that, not good. Is that, uh, uh, John, the greatest worry with things like these, these sprays, these germ-free sprays? For instance, this one here tells us that if we spray it on, once a day is all we need and it will keep everything away. Well, I mean, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to kill all, all the germs from your body? Because they are actually our first line of defence. Our whole body is actually coated with germs, good germs. Mm. If we remove the good germs by dousing ourselves with these antibacterials, then there's a greater opportunity, really, for the, for the few bad guys to, to come in and, and start to cause havoc. Perhaps. Has this become a real problem for young children? Because you have, you have a, a school of thought in parenting that you do have to protect your children with, with you know, these extremely sanitary conditions, as opposed to the school of thought that says, let them go and eat dirt. Yeah, well, my mother assures me that as a child, she used to let me uh, go out and make mud pies, and that was good. And I built up a good immunity because I actually had a lot of contact with, uh, with germs from a very early age. I think we can overprotect by trying to put up a shield of protection against good germs, yes. then we're really doing ourselves a bit of a disservice. To be fair, though, is, are there areas where we have to be very, very careful? Let's talk about the public toilet. Um, you walk into a public mm. toilet and it's almost the horror sort of envelopes you as you walk in because you know there's an awful lot of grubby stuff going on in there. Yeah, you're not quite sure sort of what's been going on, are you? No. And, uh, I think the main sort of, uh, the main sort of surf, uh, surfaces that you need to be wary of is where there's any moisture. So I'm, I'm sort of in there and I'm casting my eye around looking for a, a bit of a film of moisture somewhere. So certainly anything that's been touched or could have been touched and, uh, and surfaces that are horizontal surfaces, that's where the, the little droplets from the film of moisture that's uh, set up when you flush the toilet or when someone sneezes or coughs, uh, it's usually those horizontal surfaces or, or, or the door. I mean, as, as the door I is a real worry, isn't leave it? the cubicle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're trying to find now. Now, can I open the door with my elbow? No, no I can't. Haven't worked out how to do that. And everyone so else the, has opened uh, the door are, with their there bottoms. Are problem areas. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, someone People told have me developed once. Developed interesting technique. Yeah. Someone told me once that one of the cleanest places in a public toilet was the actual toilet seat. But sometimes, sometimes yes, uh, because uh, some some of those surfaces that they're, they're very smooth, they're, they're very um, the not good habitats, if yes. you like, for microbes to actually multiply in, so they can settle there, but they don't do well. So what then, in a sentence, is the message for people who are, if they're not already obsessed, becoming obsessed with hygiene products? I think the message that I would like viewers really to be comfortable with is that um, germs, and I, I sort of cringe a bit at the term germ, it, it, it's sort of uh, a bit deprecating really to microorganisms. Microorganisms are good, overwhelmingly good. We, we really couldn't have a, a good life on earth without microorganisms. That's in the environment and also associated with our body. 
we need them there. From the, at the moment of birth, we are germ-free, but that's the only time in our life mm. at that moment of birth where we have no microbes. And really, what you want to do is build up a good population of safe microorganisms. Now, essentially what mum and the relatives are doing are trying to seed baby with the microorganisms. So they're spitting on baby, don't they? they're kissing. Well, they're not really spitting. They're kissing baby. And doing that, they're implanting baby with their germs. And that's yes, good. Yes. So, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, John, I thank you very much for joining us. That's, that's fantastic. Professor John Tagg, microbial expert. Wouldn't that be great? Your microbial expert. And his word fantastic expert he is too. So yeah. astute and interesting. Fantastic. Very